Okay, so I would walk up to my scene, survey the scene for safety, safety for myself first. Um, I would see if there's any bystanders. I would survey what we have here. We have a early 20s female unconscious patient. Um, the scene safe for me and my partner, including the weather, the bystanders, everything. If anyone was around, I would ask if they could give me a sample history on what happened, um, any past medical history on the patients, what was leading up to the event, her last meal, um, see if I could piece together what happened. So once the scene's safe and I have my general impression of the unconscious early 20-year-old, I would go up to her and see if she could respond to my uh, either verbal stimuli, excuse me ma'am, can you open your eyes? which she doesn't, I would try shaking her, see if she could open her eyes, and I would try a painful stimuli, including um, pushing into her nail beds or uh, like onto her ear. So she doesn't respond to any of that, so I go ahead and move on to my ABCs. Um, so I would start with her airway, see if she's maintaining her own airway. Um, I would open her mouth and see if there's anything blocking her airway. Um, see if she needs to be suctioned or if she needs to have an OPA put in. Um, I would then check to see if she's breathing. I would look for chest rise and see if I could hear her breathing. Um, so she is, so she doesn't need assistance with a bag mouth bass right now. Um, so then I would check circulation, check her femoral post pulses and her radial. Um, she has good strong pulses so then I would go ahead and see if she had any um, tenderness in her C-spine or step-offs. I would put her in a collar just in case if she did have tenderness. So she'd be in a C-collar right now and my partner would be holding C-spine. Um, I would then go ahead and move to my uh, head-to-toe assessment. So I would start with her head and see if there's any um, life-threatening obvious deformities to her head or to her face. I would move down. She would be completely exposed. I'd move down to her shoulders. And I moved to her um, chest, feeling both sides of her chest, making sure that her um, breath expansion is equal on both sides. I would move down to her abdomen and feel her belly to make sure that it's soft and non-tender, um, to feel any rigidity, possible bleeding into the abdomen. I would then feel to make sure her pelvis is stable by pushing um, on both sides of it. And then I would slide down her leg, make sure um, that everything is intact and I would ask her if she could push down on my hands or pull up on my hands, which she can't. I would check her pulses and I would check her cap refill. I would do the same on the other leg to make sure that they're same on both sides. Ask her to push down, pull up, check her pulses and check cap refill. Then I would come up to her arms, slide down on her arms, um, check pulses, check cap refill, ask her to squeeze my hand if she can. At this time, I would look to see if there was any medical alert bracelets on either her ankles or her wrists. Um, I don't see any. Go to the next arm. Uh, I would slide down it, check her pulse, ask her to squeeze my hands, um, and check her cap refill. So at this time, I would um, be rolling her onto the backboard. So we would roll her, log roll her up. I would check her back to make sure that there was no tenderness or step-offs all the way down her back. Um, we would roll her onto the backboard and start to transport her to the ambulance. Um, once we're in there, I would start my secondary assessment. So I would start back up on the head. I would um, check to make sure all her bones were intact, her nasal bone. Uh, I would move down to her jaw. I would check her um, neck again through the C-collar. So I would once again check her um, tracheal midline and any JVDs. I would do one shoulder at a time. I would check her clavicle, I would do the other shoulder, check her clavicle, go down to the chest again, see if there's um, equal expansion on both sides. I would move back down to her belly, make sure it's not getting tender or rigid. Um, I would move down to her pelvis again, make sure that it's stable. Um, once again, move back down to the legs, sliding all the way down, checking pulses, asking her to push and pull and checking cap refill. And I would do that with the other leg, all the way down, pulses, pushing and pulling, and cap refill. I then move back up to her arms, um, slide back down all the way down her arms, checking pulses, checking cap refill, asking her if she can squeeze my fingers. Um, seeing that this arm is okay, I would then apply my blood pressure cuff and get a set of vital signs on her. 
while that's going, I would uh, check the other arm, um, check her pulses and cap refill. Um, once my vital signs are done, depending if she's a critical patient, I would do vital signs every five minutes. If I suspect that she's in shock, I would then cover her with a blanket and we would make it to the nearest hospital.